Hey guys, Edbud here, and today I've got my initial review for you for the Hoka Onero Ne Rocket X. It's here, it's in my hands, and I've had it on my feet too. The Rocket X is that dark horse of the carbon plate shoes from this year. It's been a relentless barrage of carbon plate shoes, and this one wasn't one I was particularly excited about trying out. What a fool I was. Today, Mr. and Mrs. Spoon will be waving in the Rocket X to Button Moon. I used to love that show. Those of you in the US have probably got absolutely no idea what I'm talking about. Check a link in the description and it will make more sense. Stats first. I've gone for my typical Hoka 11.5 UK, which is a US size 12. This one clocks in at 248 grams, which is about 8.7 ounces. There's a 5mm drop from heel to toe. And, most importantly, it's only 140 Earth credits. Yes, that's right, I said only 140 Earth credits. Over on Hoka's website, it reckons it's a 32 to 27mm drop. I think that's about right. Doesn't feel like you're in a tall skyscraper by any means. Doesn't really feel too excessive in terms of the underfoot feel. So I put 15 miles into this shoe thus far, two runs of eight miles and then seven miles. So that's 12.8 kilometers and 11.27 kilometers. So pace is there between about seven minutes per mile or four minutes 21 per kilometer and eight minutes per mile or five minutes per kilometer. The first run of about eight miles was seven minutes 30 per mile or four minutes 40 per kilometer. So I've got to run in this one at some paces more akin to my half marathon goal pace and a little bit below, certainly an exhilarating ride. But you had to run that fast really because it's been pretty chilly out there. A few people ask why I'm wearing the hat. Actually, this end of the house is really cold. I don't know why, it just is really cold. The rest of the house is nice and warm. It's not because I'm trying to save on heating or anything like that. I just genuinely like wearing this hat. My good friend Wendy Jenkins made it for me. Over the next few weeks, I'll be taking the Rocket X up to 100 miles. Last thing, this is a shoe that I bought with my own Earth credits. It's not saying that I've been sent, no freebies here. So these are my own honest opinions. I bow to no sponsor. Let's kick it off with the upper first. So I'm actually gonna start with a negative on this review. The upper sections of the shoe, you've gotta almost cinch them completely together to get a reasonable lockdown. I don't have a particularly narrow or small foot. It just seems really odd and it looks kind of odd when you have to do that. Why so much upper material? I just don't get it. But once you've got it cinched up, it's gold on foot. I mean, flexible, comfortable gold that is. If you just had a gold shoe, that wouldn't be very comfortable at all. I'm very pleasantly surprised with the upper foot feel in the Rocket X. And when you got them on, they look fire too. What a beautiful looking shoe. So light as well. Almost like it could float away. I'd say it's actually quite close to cellar mesh from Adidas, feeling similar to the Adi Zero Pro or the Adi Zero Adios Pro. I really love it. Kind of looks a bit weird on the top. When it comes to lockdown, it really is top of the tree. Another slight negative, the laces are just ridiculously long. I'm not sure why you need laces of such length. I'm gonna sub them out with some other blue laces that I've got. I've gone for an 11 and a half UK here and there's good reasonable room in the toe box in terms of height and length. If I went down to an 11, it'd just be too short, so be aware of that. Beware. I always find that hokers are a little bit short for me, so if I'd gone for the 11, I think it would have been a little lacking in length. Great lockdown once those laces are cinched and no signs of heel slip. There's quite a considerable heel counter here. I experienced no heel slippage at all. A really good lockdown. No give in the material. It just feels kind of like it did out of the box. In terms of breathability, it wasn't too cold on those chilly November evenings. I'm gonna take a few points off for the overly generous upper and those bonkers long laces. After my initial runs, I'm gonna give this a 2.7 out of three for the upper. Next, we're gonna talk about m -m 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 midsole. I went all Roger Daltrey on you there. Midsole here is far more forgiving than the Carbon X. A little bit less rigid, just a smidge just a tad, with a slightly less punishing rocker. This one's absolutely superb underfoot. It's only EVA, some special EVA with a couple of extra letters added to it. It's definitely a bit more squish to it though. Mm. I had an absolute blast running in these first two runs, I have to say guys, really exhilarating. And the legs felt absolutely brilliant afterwards. 
So with that steady tempo pace of 7 minutes 30 per mile, I felt like Fred Durst just rolling along with a smile on my face. And at last I managed to get weather appropriate attire. I think it was about 6 degrees centigrade out there. Apparently that's about 43 Fahrenheit. It was certainly chilly and I don't need to provide you with any evidence to prove it. If I was to use some other shoes to suggest what this feels like underfoot, then I'd probably say a mixture of the ASICS Meta Racer, the Socony Endorphin Pro, and then there's some hints of the Adi Zero Pro from Adidas. There's a little bit of squish, like the Endorphin Pro, yet the rigid roll of the Meta Racer too. And similar lockdown to the Adidas Adi Zero Pro. So you mix all those together in a big cauldron, and this is what you get. Well, you won't get that, you'll just get a load of soggy running shoes. So don't do that at home, kids. At faster paces though, the Rocket X showed its interstellar qualities. Even Elon would have been proud of its propulsive performance. When you get to around 7 minutes per mile, that's when things really start happening for you. I did some mile repeats as part of that 7 mile run, and I really started to enjoy that compression moulded EVA midsole. And maybe the carbon plate too. Quite a lot of these shoes, around about that point, that's where they really start kicking some posterior. One of the big hidden boons of this shoe though is the stability. I could smash around those tighter turns and those crafty corners. There's a real sense of security there. A bit like someone was just watching out for me, making sure that nothing was going wrong. I think this shoe offers a good combination of cushion and confidence in your stride and that's a really good combination in my books. Did I mention how good my legs were left feeling from this foam? Fresh as a daisy or the stinging taste of mint. I had absolutely no expectation for this shoe and gotta be honest, it's really bowled me over like a skittle. After my initial runs, I'm gonna give this one a 2.9 out of three for midsole. Only taking away a point there because the midsole's creasing up pretty badly already, certainly in that midfoot area here. Will it hold on to that nectar-like performance over the miles? Only time will tell. Outsole fans, now's your time. Tactile, rough, ready, malleable, zonal. Lots of words there that we can associate with the outsole setup on the Rocket X. Autumn in Yeovil means a dusting of wet leaves on all the paths, and the Rocket X outsole chewed them up and spat them out. Not literally, of course. Impressive. Most impressive. No issues, as I said, on those tight turns. Grip felt really assured, actually, on a variety of different surfaces. Though I fear that rocky trails or paths will impale small stones into the very soft underbelly of that exposed midsole. It'll be like hot metal through butter. There's a little bit of minimal rubber there in the heel, but clearly Hoka are trying to minimise the weight as much as possible. Just a bit there to protect the danger zones. Danger zone. Altogether, it's a really well thought out setup there. Some channeling. It works a treat. Aside from my worries about possible damage to the exposed midsole here from some rocks, there's not much to dislike here in the outsole. After my initial runs, I'm going to give it a 2.8 out of 3. Value 140 Earth credits. That's a meagre amount for such a Great shoe, a nimble, light and very responsive shoe and a price that's going to be incredibly attractive to many runners. It's coming in a little bit below the endorphin speed in terms of price and weight, only marginally heavier than the ASICS Meta Racer and cheaper to boot. Way more affordable than the Hyperion Elite 2, not perhaps as cushioned as the Endorphin Pro, but a massive improvement over the Carbon X. Even at lower paces, it felt versatile enough for me to be a shoe that I could use on a more daily basis. I think I could use this across a whole variety of different training-like activities. And you could race in it too. Hoka, you've done well here. I'm gonna give this a three out of three for value. I think it's really versatile and it's certainly a little bit more affordable. So if I've totaled up the scores correctly for the Hoka Oneone Rocket X, that gives us 11.4 out of 12. Have you tested out the Rocket X, guys? What did you make of it? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. A film recommendation for you today. As you know, guys, here in the UK, we're back in a one-month lockdown, and you can tell people are pretty 
tired, they're worried about whether they'll get to see their families and their friends, their loved ones at Christmas. You've got to give people something to look forward to, that little light in the distance. So I'm just getting ready for Christmas now. I don't care what people say. Oh, it's not December yet. Oh. Normal life has gone out the window, guys. If I want to celebrate Christmas, I'm just going to celebrate it for the next two months. So my favourite Christmas film had to be pulled out. It's the National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. I say favourite Christmas film, I've got about 30 favourite Christmas films. I still believe. I can shake the bell. I can still hear it. I hear it ringing. I hear that bell ringing every time a new pair of running shoes comes. This classic Chevy Chase film has got everything you need in a Christmas film. Exterior illumination. It's got a man damaging a Santa Claus effigy. I particularly like the bit where Clark gets stuck upstairs in the loft and starts watching all the old Christmas films. He's got stuff there when he was little, you know, with his mum and dad. It's awesome. I particularly like the section with the chainsaw and also the squirrel as well that wreaks havoc throughout the Griswold household. Randy Quaid's character Eddie as well is particularly awesome. You know the bit I mean, that there's an RV. Yeah, you gotta love National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Bizarrely, I think it was never released in the cinemas over here in the UK, but it's gone on to become one of those cult classics. So get your Christmas tree out, guys, get the lights up. Let's get a party started here. Come on, I'm gonna do it right now. In fact, I might go and buy a box of after eight dinner mints and eat the whole lot. Thanks for tuning in for the review today, guys. I really do appreciate it. I hope you're doing fine out there. If you're a new viewer and you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications of when we launch that new running shoe content. It does help the channel out a huge amount as well. If you give this video a thumbs up like, and also share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.